What's up guys? Josh here with Survive First Contact. Just wanted to do a, a follow-up on some vehicle prep stuff. See the little uh, the garage shit I got going on back there. Um, we're going to show you all that stuff and talk you through uh, some things I think you should have in your vehicle uh, for everyday vehicle prep stuff. So, And let's go for it. So, um, I've made some shorter clips but didn't narrate them. Um, and I have a, uh, an article on my website uh, covering vehicle prep stuff. But I figured I'd go over some of this real quick. Uh, and talk through it. Uh, the moral of the story is with the vehicle prep stuff, um, you need to be able to keep the vehicle going. So in your emergency situation, uh, your vehicle is going to be a lifeline. Uh, it, it gives you mobility and mobility equals survival. Uh, if bad stuff's happening, you got to get in your car and go. Um, you don't, you're not going to have time to pack a whole bunch of stuff. That's just the nature of emergencies. A lot of people think oh, I'm going to be able to run around and, and fill my vehicle with stuff. It's not going to go that way. Um, having things pre-staged in your vehicle, uh, mainly because like vehicle repair kind of stuff, um, is the only place you're going to use this with your vehicle for the most part. So uh, have what you can stored there, uh, staged and ready to go. And, and keeping your vehicle going. Um, beginning with like engine and drivetrain, right, with our fluids here. Um, got some antifreeze uh, and a quart of oil. Um, and then my hose here to do some siphoning uh, for fuel. Um, Covering things like your cooling, your oil, um, keeping your vehicle going at least until that next rest stop or until you can get to somewhere having just enough fluids to top off something like a radiator um, or, or your oil uh, to make sure that you don't tear up your engine and completely make your vehicle inoperable while you're trying to get to the next place uh, to pick up this kind of stuff. And specifically for me, um, having extra oil, I only carry usually one quart, one quart's the minimum, um, but specifically my make and model of Honda Pilot here, the Grocery Getter Pilot. I mean, I like it, it's got lots of space in here. But uh, anyways, this make and model, specifically one quart of oil because the SUV can be down around one quart of oil and at that time, that's about when my oil warning light is going to flash. Um, any lower than that and you risk tearing up the engine, but at least me knowing that spec, I know that I can top it off with one quart of oil as long as it hasn't been leaking too aggressively and I can make it to that next place. But looking up like your vehicle manufacturer specs um, and making sure that like your indicator lights, that something is wrong, uh, that you have enough things to handle that to get to the next place. You know, having one quart of oil if your light comes on after being two quarts low isn't really gonna help you all that much. So knowing that stuff is good. Um, and then your, your siphon hose, like I said, if you get somewhere and you can't uh, bring fuel with you, I have another post on this. But basically, you feed this into whatever container you want to siphon with. It's got a little glass ball in there for a one-way valve. You just shake this guy, start the suction, fuel comes out this side. Um, so moving on from our fluids, here's kind of our uh, tire tire repair section. Um, tires are your feet on the car, and you got to keep them going, obviously. So a uh, quick can of fix a flat. Um, it's a cheap quick fix but definitely not permanent um, and you risk damaging your tires with it. I also got um, just a cheap uh, plug kit and I got several of these in both of the vehicles but you know you you punch a hole in a tire and you're able to pull a nail or, or some kind of debris out of there and be able to plug it and then trim it and get you to the next thing. Tire chains. Uh, my vehicle is four-wheel drive um, however without aggressive tires you're not making it through uh, mud and snow and I, I hail from the northeast snowy buffalo New York um, having a set of snow tires and chains, never a bad idea uh, to get you through, but obviously preferring like a survival type situation, survival setting to avoid anything that's going to get you stuck altogether. And then more along the lines of your tires, um, this is just a pump um, that runs off your cigarette lighter of the car. So as long as the car is still running, uh, plug up your tire pump here and be able to pump things. Uh, moving on to a little more recovery stuff for someone that you might need something that you might need another vehicle, another person to help you. I got my snatch rope here. Uh, this is a two inch braided nylon snatch rope. Um, I have a little hitch mount here. This is uh, from Rhino USA uh, with a shackle that goes into my hitch. Here's a shackle from the other end. Basically these ropes are really awesome. I use these a lot overseas to get unstuck and quickly. I have it staged like this so I can uh, hop out, pop the hitch in, uh, attach my rope to whoever I'm trying to help, whoever's trying to help me, hook it uh, to their tow point, uh, that's another point for you. Look up uh, where your vehicle's tow points are. So when you have this stuff, uh, you know that when you're in a hurry in an emergency, you can help someone get unstuck or help yourself get unstuck. 
But anyways, back to these ropes. Uh, these ropes can be a little pricey. Uh, this is a big two-inch one, uh, so you're well over 50,000 pounds of towing. And the cool thing about these ropes uh, is they are stretchy with the nylon. They stretch uh, about a third of their length. And the idea is uh, that you get that good pull on somebody. It's not going to jar their vehicle right away. That rope is going to stretch. And then since you are the force that's pulling, that stretch, when the rope recoils on itself, it's going to give that extra push, that extra bump to pull that stuck vehicle out. Uh, so that's the cool thing about that. Uh, more basic stuff here. Uh, got your jumper cables. Uh, to note about jumper cables, uh, the heavier weight, meaning the lower gauge number you can get, means, means a thicker diameter wire. The lower gauge means a thicker wire within your jumper cables, jumper cables meaning you're going to transfer electricity better and get a better jump. So uh, heavier gauge jumper cables and always have those, you know, in case your battery dies or someone else's can always help. Uh, just your bag of ratchet straps there from, you know, some simple one inch ones um, and some circular straps, just a girth hitch all the way up to your 5,000 pounders for that. Uh, and then moving into some kind of extraneous stuff, um, JB Weld. Uh, pretty much everything on your vehicle is metal and or plastic. Um, so having a bunch of different kinds of JB weld, you know, you, you, you have an issue and you need to, to bond something back together. Um, stuff works pretty well on most surfaces. Um, and it seals and cures pretty quickly. You know, most of it within 30 minutes to where um, it's going to hold fluids that you need. Uh, so you can do a quick spot repair, uh, wait a little bit, and then add fluids or do what you need to do and roll on from there. Fire extinguisher. Um, your vehicle is obviously... Uh, potentially a giant fire hazard. Uh, you got gas and other flammable things in here. Um, having that ready to go, you know, you can do a car accident or you come up on a car accident, the ability to put that out, um, that's huge. Uh, you see more of my straps here, a uh, case of water. You see my go bag back there, go bag. Talk will be for another day. Um, but, you know, water while we're here, it, it's hot here in Virginia or it's hot, you know, pretty much across the world uh, this time of year. Uh, having water, having fluids with you, always a good thing. I usually... Uh, cut these cases in half, uh, so I have between 12 and 24 bottles of water, which I go through in about a week, so I'm not drinking water that's been cooking in the car. Not suggested that you uh, drink water that's been superheated or cooked by the sun because of the plastic, uh, but that's another talk altogether as well. Moving to here, I got my uh, emergency weather radio that I can crank. It also has a little uh, solar feature up here. You can charge it. Um, some basic stuff for summer. But it's always back here. Got your bug spray, a uh, couple different kinds of sunscreen. Uh, my wife is allergic to sulfa, so we have to buy a couple different kinds of sunscreen so she can use hers. But obviously, good to know that stuff. And then a little package of palm olive soap. Uh, I did a post about soap. Uh, always good to have hygiene things with you, be able to wash off and go around the side here. Uh, again, just to uh, speak to the size here, I like the size of the pilot, even though it's kind of a grocery getter mom type of vehicle um, lots of space in here uh, and that goes into my med bag so my med bag is accessible from my front seats here and i can still pull it up and out with the seats completely down in my vehicle and point being uh, this is big enough that i can lay someone down back here with these seats down and someone can be working on them while we're transporting to the hospital um, and, and that's a big deal um, being able to treat someone on the move is huge and covered so a pickup truck you can obviously get someone in the back of a pickup truck uh, to treat them but Take it from me, it's definitely nice to not be in the elements bouncing around outside uh, when you're trying to work on someone who is injured or a casualty. Um, let's see, put my seat up here so you can see it. Another great vehicle thing. Uh, there's nooks and crannies uh, to stick things everywhere. My map, my road atlas. Uh, this one's from 2021, uh, updated. I had an older one that was uh, pretty chewed up, but always having a map in your vehicle somewhere is super important because we all work off GPS nowadays, but uh, we know GPS fails uh, or without power, it's not working. So uh, having a paper map so you can reference where the hell you are, super good idea. Last thing, moving up front here, turn your arm more time. Right in my door, so driver's seat for me. Uh, we'll start in the center here. A uh, little glass breaker seatbelt cutter from Rescue Me, accessible my, by myself. Uh, or the passenger right there in the center. If vehicle flips over, you can always index uh, where that stuff is, so that's important. Um, got another one, got a Gerber seatbelt cutter down here on my seatbelt. All I have to do is trace my seatbelt down if something happens, and I know that I'm gonna get to my seatbelt cutter. And moving into my door, again, uh, within arm's reach. Tourniquet, 
medical stop the bleed stuff, right? Uh, be able to get at it and get out with one hand. Uh, got a so got in here, little buck knife. Uh, the CSAR T model, use this all through Sear School. Uh, it's got a pretty heavy spine, and I've done um, some pretty good chopping with it. Works out. Got a uh, another glass breaker and a seatbelt cutter on there. Um, and then right in the door, flashlight from Streamlight. This is the One Lima One Alpha Alpha model, so you can use uh, shorter lithium battery, battery or um, AA batteries. Um, got another battery tape there uh, for quick. Uh, quick replacement, and then a lighter, your fire source, right? Always ready to go. And then, uh, I don't know if you saw back there, I have a couple butane bottles in there that uh, I can refill that lighter with, and then uh, some regular fuel tanks that I have for the, the micro stoves uh, that go in my go bag. Yep, there's the butane fuel right here, and my go bag. So, that's pretty much all I got, guys, on vehicle prep stuff. Um, like I said, if you have room, uh, bring this stuff with you. Uh, there's no There's no points awarded for saving space in your vehicle um, it, it, unless you need that space for people. Um, don't overload it in your prep so much that you can't get the people in there that you need because the people are the precious cargo here. Um, but storing stuff in your vehicle so your vehicle always prepped, uh, always a great idea. And like I said, a lot of it should be based on vehicle maintenance, trying to keep your vehicle going because your mobility is your survivability at that point. Uh, and then your go bag and all the other things you're going to need to sustain uh, people that are in the vehicle. Uh, that's your next that's your next thing, obviously. So that's all I got, guys. Stay safe out there. Peace.